and the 15th verse. The book of Mark, the 16th chapter, and the 15th verse. I want to share something with, the, with you this morning that is dear to my heart. I try not to hold you no longer than the Lord has me to. Mark the 16th chapter in the 15th verse. Mark 16 and 15 says, And He said unto them, now it's important to know that Jesus is getting ready to ascend into heaven. This is after His death, His burial, His resurrection, after He had appeared to the disciples several times, and here He is. This would be the last time that He would appear to them. After, yeah, 40 days later. And after He would tell them these things, then the Bible says He would ascend into heaven. If you read over there in the book of Acts, it's the same, this is the same time that it's talking about here in the book of Mark. And He said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the Gospel to every creature. He that believeth that is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In My name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and they, if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And after He had said this, the Bible says, So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and stood at the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord working with them and confirming the Word with signs following. Amen. Jesus could have spent these last moments with His disciples talking to them about a lot of different things. <clears throat> Yet we find Him giving them what we call the Great Commission. A charge, if you will, for them to take the Gospel, the message of Jesus, His finished work of the cross, the plan of salvation, the Word of God, into all the world to preach it to every creature, every man, woman, boy, girl, every child, preach the Gospel. He could have spent this time, Brother least talking to them about a lot of things. But He wanted to make sure they knew why He was leaving them here. He said, go into all the world and preach the Gospel to every creature. He gives them not a request. He doesn't say, you know boys, if it'd be alright with you, I, I, I think you know, it'd be okay if you might you know, go out and, and preach a little bit. No, He looks at them and says, go! ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Recently I heard a pastor friend of mine, he was talking on the radio, and what he said rang a bell inside of my spirit because it's something that I have always believed, always felt, maybe not always have lived up to what the way I believe, but I know this in my heart. He said, This is what he said in so many words, and I'm not quoting him. It doesn't matter how great your choir is. It doesn't matter how great your building is. It doesn't matter how great your programs are. It doesn't matter how great your preacher is. If you do not have a vision of being part of fulfilling the Great Commission, you will never be a great church. But Brother Billy, we have a hundred on Sunday morning. I don't care. If all you have is your four and you're satisfied with no more, then you are not a great church. There are greater churches like this one in storefronts that have a handful of people that are greater in the eyes of the Lord than the mega churches across the world simply because they are not taking the gospel, the word of God to the world like Jesus commissioned the church to do. Oh, you can have fancy buildings. But see, the church was not commissioned, Brother Sleese, to build a fancy building and go into it and let the world go to hell. Amen? 
Jesus never charged His people. And I want you to go and build some nice buildings. I want you to go and build you some recreational halls. Yeah. I want you to go and build yourself some good fellowship areas. Yeah. I want you to go and build yourself some Christian amusement parks. Say, yeah. oh, no, 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 no. That's man's doings, not God's. Jesus looked at him and said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. Not go and build your big cathedrals. Not go and build your big churches that have to have balconies or go and remodel your ball stadiums in order to get your thousands in there to hear you preach, but take the gospel to every creature. Take it to them. Take it to them. <clears throat> Not for you to go inside your church house on Sunday morning and sing, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine, while the world dies and goes to hell. He commissioned the church, the body of Christ, to be the light of the world. Matthew 5 and 16, He told them, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I tell you, every Sunday, every Tuesday night, as we close out, I say, Go outside those doors and be the light that you're supposed to be. You were never intended to hide what you got from God. The Bible says what man takes his candle and hides it under a bushel. Honey, I got news for you. If you begin to hide your light, if you take it and hide it from the sight of man, you will cut it off from oxygen and it will soon fade away. The light inside of you that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ in you, the hope of glory, that shines forth as that light out of this old earthen vessel, that's what it's supposed to do is shine to all men. All men. You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men so that they will see your good works. So that they will glorify your Father which is in heaven. You are the only Bible that some people will ever read. It is your job to be your brother's keeper. It is supposed to be your concern that there are millions dying lost and undone without God and going to hell. He never intended for us to get together and get some boards and, and, and set us some deacons up and, and just get us a, you know, rent us a nice building or better yet, let's build us a big complex. Amen. Let's build us a big complex and hang some chandeliers and put the nicest carpets. And I'm not downing you for having those things, but honey, if you are satisfied with that and no outreach, you are in trouble. I don't care how beautiful the body of water, if it does not have no in and no out, it's going to get stagnant and nothing can live there. Everything in it will die. Yeah. Everything in it will die. You have to not only be taking it in, but you got to be putting it out. Yeah. You not only can just come inside your four walls uh, with the cure, the answer for the world, and let the world die and go to hell in a handbasket, you must take this gospel to the whole world. That was His commission. The message, the change that Jesus has made in you, you must share with somebody else. You must share with somebody else. You see, so much is done today. So much money is spent. So much time is put in with our committees and with our little cliques that we've got going on, with our building projects and with our recreational halls. All of those things that we neglect to do the very thing that Jesus charged and commissioned the body of Christ to do once He left. He said, you take this light. You take this Gospel. And as much as I believe in the local assembly, as much as I believe in the local church, it should never stop there. This church is not meant to just be, well, we've got a storefront church and we've got 12 people and we're satisfied with that. And that's all we're going to We're going to have church on Sunday morning and church on Tuesday night and we'll have our get-togethers and our fellowships and we'll just let the world just go on into hell. That ain't what it's supposed to be like. With that's the way it is. That's the way it is. It ain't the way it's supposed to be. See, this church, this ain't supposed to be it. Your local church is supposed to be, I don't know exactly how to put it, the hub, maybe. The center of all the other outreaches that you have going. Amen. I believe in the local church, but our vision has to go farther than our city limits. 
First we have to decide it goes farther than our doors. Amen? Yeah. Because we come in and we sing and we hope somebody will come in. Amen? Yeah. we got to take it beyond the walls of the church. And then we got to take it beyond the limits of our city. Then we got to have a vision that goes beyond the limits of our state. Then we got to have a vision that goes beyond the limits of our country. We have to have a vision today to take the gospel to the world that's dying and lost and undone without God. When's the last time anybody ever knocked on your door to share the gospel with you or to share a message with you that wasn't a Jehovah's Witness? Amen? Because they believe they're supposed to take what they know, even though it ain't real, even though it's, even though it's false, even though it's deceit. They believe that they're supposed to take what they know and share it with others. Yet somehow, those who are actually have the truth so many times, I got it. I ain't going to share it with nobody, but I got it. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. It's mine. It's mine. You can't have it. Amen? You ever seen a little kid grab something? That's mine. That belongs to me. You can't play with it. I ain't going to share it with you. You know what I'm like. I ain't going to share it with you. Well, that's the way church is. I'm holding on to the promise. I'm holding on. Yeah. I ain't going to share it with nobody else. I ain't going to let my light shine. Amen? Well, what if they not think bad about me? Oh. Uh, I believe in the local assembly. And I believe the local assembly should be the center or the hub or your headquarters or whatever name you want to put on it. Yeah. But the, but the Exactly. Yeah. Where all of your other outreaches go from that. Mm -hmm. You might scratch your head sometimes and wonder, well, why in the world do we mess with being on the radio? This is why. Why are we on the internet? This is why. Mm -hmm. Why do we video the sermons? This is why. Mm -hmm. Why do we send out the CDs and the cassettes and the newsletters every month? This is why. Why do we do the podcast and the internet downloads and all the different things? We have? Why are we on AM radio and FM radio? This is why. Why do we have our own internet station that, that airs 24 hours a day, 7 days a week? This is why. Because of the fire that burns inside of me, and I hope inside of you, not just to keep it for yourself, but to take it to the world that is lost and undone and deceived and swallowing everything that comes down the religious pipe today. Yeah. When we have the truth. See, it would be no different. It would be no different today. And if there was a disease sweeping rampant over the world, and it was taking the lives of those that it got a hold of. And you came inside of your building and you sat there with the antidote, the cure, that which they needed to heal them. Yet you sit there on the medicine. You sit there on the antidote. You sit there on the cure, unwilling to share it with anybody else while they died of the disease that was taking their life. We have the antidote today. Amen. We have the cure today. We know who has it. We know who is the cure today. Jesus Christ and Him crucified is good for whatever ails you. Amen. You remember those old snake oil salesmen that used to travel around, and you see them on TV in those uh, in those old you know those those wagons, you know, and they had the horses pulling, and on the side it would say, you know, whatever elixir cures everything that ails you. Honey, I got a book for you today that'll cure everything that ails you, and I'm not satisfied with just having it for myself. I want to take it not only to Livermore, Kentucky, not only to Kentucky, not only to the United States, but around the world. I want them to know what I know. I want them to feel what I feel. I want them to experience what I've experienced. Hallelujah. I want them to know the Jesus that I know. I want them to have the life-changing experience. How He's done it for me, I want them to know He can do it for them. And that's the way it's supposed to be. That's why sometimes it don't seem like there's enough 